Order of Light presents A New Era of Contact UFO Sightings and Strange Anomalies Secret Space Programs and Off-World Adventures Advanced Technologies and New Discoveries Extraterrestrial Abductions and Contactees Now is the time to speak as we explore the unknown, the uncertain, and unseen, we are the disclosure, and these are those stories. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited everyone is here today. To all of my subscribers and everyone that is watching this right now, much love to you. Thank you for being here. Tonight, we have an amazing guest, Anthony Sinclair. He has the unidentified. Uh, it's S4, Unidentified S4 YouTube channel where he's putting a lot of great stuff from Bigfoot to UFOs to whistleblowers and so many other uh, amazing topics just covering everything that is mysterious. And he had a very interesting experience back in 1993 in Staten Island, okay? And it was with some sort of triangular craft. And most of you may know my UFO crash story being in 1991 here in Southern New Jersey, also a triangular craft. There are a lot of differences between our experiences, but there is certain overlapping factors. And I'm really looking forward to hearing his experience when he was uh, just a young little lad there and uh, growing up in Staten Island, it's a wild place, but apparently there's even wilder stuff going on up in the skies there. Sure and with is. that being said, uh, before we get this going, everyone, please hit that like button. It literally takes two seconds, yet so many of you don't do it. And oh, man, Anthony, you get that on your channel. I see that all the time. Like, yeah, I see that all the time. I'll get a thousand views. Yep. About 25 likes. What <laughs> is going on? Just hit the like button. It helps they us. they put more comments in there than they do likes. Uh, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> They'll get but, with it someday. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. And that's why we got to remind them religiously over and over. True. But with that being said, welcome to the show, Anthony. Thanks and if you me. could, because you have a really um, impressive uh, background, credible background. And if you could just go over a little bit of who you are and a little bit of your background. Sure. Um, again, my name is Anthony Essenplayer. I'm a, a, a full-time ufologist now, but my uh, career stems from law enforcement. I uh, started my career in the corrections department in New Jersey, as a matter of fact, over in Middlesex County. Oh, wow. I was a, a corrections officer there for about five years. And then I got called up to the big leagues. Uh, the New York State Police was looking for guys, took the test, got called. Uh, graduated second in my class. And uh, I stood there for about 10 and a half years till I got injured. Because uh, I moonlighted uh, with the union since I'm 17 years old. My dad got me a union book. And I built skyscrapers. So whenever I had free time, I would go moonlight on jobs. I was allowed to do like 25 hours a week. And unfortunately, uh, my last job I was on, uh, the floor above collapsed. And I got crushed in there. And, um, you know, had all reconstructive surgery done. And unfortunately I had to go out on disability, but it kind of worked out. Uh, you know, I'm alive and I get to focus more on my passion, which is UFOs, ghosts, and cryptids. So it's not the darkest road as some may seem when you get injured like that, but uh, I love what I do. Um, and, uh, I, I get to do it every single day of my life. So who's more lucky than me, you know? Yeah. So, and wow, you're lucky to be alive. Sounds like a, yeah, it was a really, really bad accident. The uh, matter of fact, it was in the Staten Island Mall. Uh, we were doing a, a demolition job in a store, and the uh, had a couple guys up in the ceiling dislodging uh, I beams, and it the structural support gave way, and a huge section of ceiling came down. And me and a couple guys got pinned under there, and uh, they had to dig us out. It was. It was bad, but uh, I pulled through. I persevered, and that's that's really all that matters. I'm a fighter, so. <laughs> but, you, uh, you sure are. Wow. It was a close call. I'll tell you that, though. It was a close I'm, call. It was an eye-opener, right? 
They yeah, put yeah. Some I've, things in I've had a couple eye openers throughout my life, but that was uh, that really put the icing on the cake. That one. Yeah. Wow. I can't imagine, and I'm sure glad you're still here with us today, you. and you pulled through. So yeah, and uh, you do have a YouTube channel. You're doing a lot about ufos cryptids paranormal all that good stuff but most people that are making these sorts of videos have a reason of why they're doing it and nine times out of ten it's because they've had their own experience yep and with that being said i cannot wait to hear this experience you had in 1993 with the black triangle I'd be happy to take it back. So let's go back to 93. I was uh, 13. Uh, it was actually my birthday month. My birthday is October 4th. I believe this was October 1st. So I was a couple days shy of my 14th birthday. And my father had just bought me a motorcycle, a dirt bike, a RM80, uh, uh, the month before for my birthday when it just had come out. And we would go dirt bike riding over in the South Beach area of Staten Island because it was all wetland over there for miles. There was no houses there yet. So it was all marshland. So every Saturday we would uh, meet up early in the morning, like 8 o'clock, maybe like 12, 13 of us start dirt bike riding. And then whatever would come in from the neighborhood to dirt bike ride, we would all meet up because we would build tracks out there. And uh, I would say close to about 10 o'clock in the morning, um, I'm, you know, hitting the tracks or whatever. And then we start to split off and then the bike started running out of fuel and I had stopped. And this is now getting closer to lunchtime. So I, I carried a school bag with me and I kept like a, a half gallon gas tank in there and uh, a little shot of uh, two stroke oil. And I'm mixing the gas, filling the bike up. And then after I was done with that, I decided to kick back and lean on the bike because I was covered in mud and I'm cleaning my face, drinking a bottle of water. And as I'm drinking the bottle of water and I'm, you know, doing it like this, I, I notice out, I think it was to the east side of the wetlands, uh, I seen a, what appeared to be a huge black triangular object coming in. Wow. So, yeah, just, just, just like you see it in this depiction, basically. And I noticed the craft there up to the, up to the left side. And I, I had assumed I was going to get a look at the stealth bomber. That's what I thought it was because every year we had the Air and Sea show in New York. They would go to Coney Island and the jets would turn around on Staten Island because they need a huge turning radius. And that would happen like right over my house, right over the wetlands where the ocean was. And it, they would shoot back to Coney Island. It was like omnidirectionally perfect. And I'm like, oh, man, stealth bomb is coming. I'm going to get to see this thing. But as this thing was coming in, it's coming in and it's dropping lower and lower and lower. And finally, it got to its destination, and it stopped. And it, I want to say, guesstimation, it was about three quarters of, of a football field away from me. Close. It's very close. Really close. Very close. And it, I, I want to say, it's very hard to gauge uh, height, and being the craft was so huge, um, how exactly high. But I want to say anywhere from 800 to 1,000 feet above me. Wow. And it stops. And now I'm really in shock at what I'm looking at because as it was slowly coming in on its approach to stop, underneath looked like a sheet of black glass, okay? And it's wow. reflecting the dirt road, the trees, the foliage, everything on the underside of this craft. And to give you an idea for color, I keep this rock. I wish I knew the name of it. But it's like this metallic uh looking color so that's the color of the skin of this craft wow and underneath the skin of this craft as i'm reflecting this that's kind of what the skin looked like uh like reflecting bits of light inside this you know the under skin of this object mm -hmm. so think of a tr3b in your head but not not the standard one right and anyway it stops i'm looking at this thing dead silent no smoke coming from it, no lights, uh, nothing, no sound. And it now it stopped. And all the sound, friends on dirt bikes behind me, I don't hear them all. Every, all the sound just ends. No wind, no, no nothing, no birds, no dirt bikes, no cars, no, no sound whatsoever. It just turned off. 
And as the crib's sitting there, it starts slowly turning counterclockwise, ever so slowly. And as it's doing that, uh, I notice another object rise from it and slowly peel off as if you turn a page from the textbook and it sits right next to each other and they very slowly are both spinning counterclockwise. Now, I wouldn't have noticed it, but I was paying so close attention to this thing and the points are changing as it's slowing, as it's turning. So I'm noticing that this, this thing's a turning. And I'm just staring up there and like, I can't believe what I'm looking at. And I'd say about six, eight minutes, 10 minutes tops that goes on. They slowly, the second one slowly recollects itself to the top. It's recollecting itself and it's slowly going up and they're still rotating with each other and still slowly going up. And I, I always say it locked into position because once that thing was fully down and sat on it, this thing shot straight up like I, I, there's nothing I could describe to how the, if you put a comment in reverse, that's the only way I could describe how fast this thing went up and it was out of my line of sight. And as soon as it was out of my line of sight, the sound turned back on, like somebody flipped the light switch. And the first thing I remember is hearing somebody whistle really loud. And I knew it was my dad and I was kind of shook, kind of nervous and he did it again. And then I said, I'm over here, but I couldn't get my words out loud enough because I was like in shock and really confused about what was going on. And then he screamed my name and I yelled, I'm over here. And he said, don't you move. And he came running to me and he gave me a big bear hug. And he said, where were you? And then he said, Marie's over here. And then my mom, Anthony, and she came running over. And um, I said, what's going on? And Erica, come over here. Your brother's over here. And my mom, my dad, my sister, and they're all in the woods and they're like, let's go. We're going on. My father's like, you know how many hours you're gone? You should have been all hours ago. And I'm like, dad, it's, it's like lunchtime. Day's not even over. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm trying to explain to him, did you see the big black triangle stealth bomber craft that came through here and stopped? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, I didn't see anything. Get home. So now it's me, my mom, my sister behind me, and I'm walking the motorcycle back, you know, maybe about four or five, eight minute walk, whatever it was back to the house. And I'm walking and talking and trying to explain what's going on. He's like, you're gone for hours. And after I passed the tree line, I noticed that the sun was below the trees. That was wow. the first thing I noticed. Cause it and was during the sighting, it was noon. The sun would have been like directly right. above yeah. it. Right. Yeah. So wow. I mean, it was really weird. Now the sun's down, but it's so right out you know but the sun's down now and i'm like this is weird and then i get back to the garage and, and i'm saying to myself something's off five o'clock what is he talking about you know get to the garage i'm gonna hose down the motorcycle and the clock says 518 so i really couldn't believe i stood it i thought that clock was wrong i still didn't believe that kick my boots off go up the deck go into the house and on the microwave you know, now it's like, you know, 520, 519, 520, whatever the time was. But, you know, it, it, it was right. The clocks were right. And I couldn't believe that this happened because, you know, where did five five hours go? I, I still eight have minute that. walk, eight minute, 10 minute. Roughly, walk, like roughly if that, you know, like, like where did all that time go? I, I, I honestly feel like I was sitting there for no more than six to 10 minutes looking at the craft. And, you know, by the time the second one came off, they recollected that whole thing took roughly 10 minutes. If that, okay. I, I really don't know where all that time went. I've told and you were conscious, you were awake, oh, yeah, you were observing. Awake. It's you not know. like you passed out and then you just woke up and five hours, you were no. right there. I was, I was wide awake looking at that thing, you know, and, and nothing will change my mind. And I, I was wide awake and I've spoken to many ufologists, some very prominent in the field as I'm sure we both know. And, you know, a lot of these experiences that I've spoken with have had very similar so stories. One woman told me she was out on her back deck with her boyfriend at the time. And one of these crafts flew over and, you know, her boyfriend had left for a few minutes to go in the house and make coffee. And by the time he came back, uh, he didn't notice her outside and she thought she was standing there the whole time. And, you know, she swears she was there and he swears she wasn't one of those situations, but, you know, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people where it's very similar. Now, for me, yeah. 
I'm not into the whole hypnotic regression thing. Although now, as I get older, I'm I'm contemplating it because I'm, I'm weary. I don't know. I don't I don't want to do it. I'm weary of it well, myself. Yeah, maybe I'm a little naive, but you know, I don't want somebody uh, digging in my head and said, "All right, uh, we're going to shut you off. You're going to go rob a bank, come back. You're not going to know what happened." You know, that's you know, who knows what they could do? You know, some yeah. people are very talented, and uh, that's what I fear the most. But I really want to know what happened during the missing time. Mm -hmm. I really want to know. I really want to know, did they, was I taken? Did they project something in my mind to make me think I was standing looking at the object, but really something entirely different was going on? That's what I really want to know. And I mean, two years of research, I'm researching this almost 26 years now, and the stories just get stranger. But every time you talk about the black triangular crafts, I mean, people have told me they lost sound, no sound, the sound shut off, time loss. Uh, a bunch of people described the same kind of skin texture on the craft. Um, so I've heard hundreds of stories that are similar. So it makes me feel more comfortable. Uh, I know I didn't have a nervous breakdown at 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, it actually happened. I, I've even gone back to the neighborhood and have spoken to neighbors that live there their whole lives and asked, I, you know, it's going to sound strange, but you know, you ever remember seeing a UFO over the woods when we were kids, big black triangle too, maybe, you know, and neighbors are like, no, and you know, I, I don't, you know, some people are, yeah, I've seen a UFO before, but no, no, I don't remember no black triangle. Believe me, I've asked. So that draws the question to me, was it meant for me? Because I, I I've also learned that certain things could be meant just for you to witness and see the whole event could be designed just for you and, and it could be possible i don't know um i've heard crazier things but i'm open to anything because i don't i don't know robert you know yeah well so many things and one thing i want to kind of validate with this not only was the craft the triangular craft completely silent actual physical audio you know around you yeah. muted and i've heard this over and over again and in my investigating and talking to probably a lot of the same people you have one thing i've noticed and not just triangular ufos some others have these properties as well i believe the stopping of time the stopping of sound in order for that to scientifically physically happen it has to be manipulated by frequencies and vibrations. It has to be. That's the only way you would be able to do anything like that. And we right. have sound weaponry. Yeah, in our military. Ways. Yeah. Sure. So, I mean, it, I believe it's some sort of um, something coming off of that craft that could do that. Right. And another question you have to ask yourself, and you have been asking yourself, like, was it for yeah. me? And with right. my family's case, why was our triangle just hovering behind our house to begin with? Out of the entire world, why was it doing what it did and stopped with this 13-year-old boy on a dirt bike? Sitting, right. You weren't even riding. You actually I'm stopped. You were just sitting there with nothing else to do. Yeah, you know? I was just leaning back, you know, just drinking water. And I, I swear, if I didn't pick my head up like that to drink all the water... And come back down. I would have never probably noticed that it was even coming in. I probably wouldn't have noticed till it was really in the woods. You know what I mean? But I, I actually got to see it come in on a its whole entire approach in, which was amazing. And you know? out. And and well, and up. You know, mm -hmm. it didn't go back out. It went straight up, which was very odd to see something do that. I don't know how it ma manipulates the atmosphere around it to pull it up so quickly because the speed that thing was going, if a human was in there, they would have been crushed. They yeah. would have been cherry pie on the wall. That's how fast that thing went up. So yeah, I mean, the G force, what it, the G forces would have been immense for probably a human. Yeah. Um, wow. So I, I, I don't, I don't know how that's plausible and for a person. One other question I have for you pertaining to this, you know, you got to see this broad daylight. All right. Yeah three-fourths of a football field, all right? Extremely yeah. close. And you also mentioned there was no lights on it. And yeah. I wonder if this same craft would have been at nighttime 
would there have been lights? But, you know, my family's uh, triangular craft, it was nighttime and it had lights. And that's the only uh, way we were able to see that blackish material of uh, that rock you have, that yeah. same texture uh, well, from the, the illumination. It, you you did see the same texture as this then? It, Similar? Our craft, I described it as like meteorite looking, yes. like rough with cracks, and yeah. but it was raining, and the three blue lights and the white bright light in the center, if it I wasn't for the it. glow, and because it was raining, there was like a glistening, a reflection, but we weren't able to get the kind of view on this craft in the same way you did broad daylight directly under this thing that I, close. I wow. give them a lot of credit though, because whoever designed it or wh wherever it came from, it's a beautiful object to see. I mean, when you have a lot, all these years to contemplate, would you look at, I mean, the aerodynamics on this thing must be pristine. You know, you like that, that beautiful slick arrow shape. That thing must cut through time and space like nothing they have. I mean, beautiful. I can see why if the you know United States military or any militaries around the world, if they decided to reproduce or you know back engineer one of these things, why they would choose that triangular shape uh, because uh, aerodynamically it's totally viable to cut through any atmosphere, I would say, and yeah. possibly even be able to go underwater. Being so airtight, I mean, if it could go in space, it has to have the properties to go under the water too. I would say, exactly. Um, you know, it's it's a beautiful object. Now, I wish if there were any occupants on board or anything like that, maybe I got to speak to them, and maybe sometime I'll have hypnotic regression. Maybe I'll, I'll find the courage to do it, and we'll find out more. But um, just being able to see it up close and personal like that is a blessing and being mm -hmm. a ufologist getting to see how it operated a little bit is also uh awe inspiring you know and a blessing to to be able to be one of the people that have witnessed that i have a lot of back and forth with people that are you know they're naysayers or disbelievers but i'll still sit and speak with them because everybody's entitled to their opinion you know i try to respect everyone but i you know i try to I'll bring up to them when they say, well, Anthony, you know, how did you have five hours missing time? How's that even possible? And then I'll, I'll bring up, well, have you ever been driving in your car and you've got from point A to point B, but you don't remember how you got there? You kind of zoned out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I've had that happen to me. Well, explain how that happened to you, then I would say. You have no explanation, right? So, you know, neither do I. It but happens. No, it happens. That's that's the point. So that's, that's, I usually get them on the hook like that. And then I said, well, you see what I'm saying? And then they understand. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have to try to find common ground amongst each other instead of arguing all the time. Because yeah. none of us are experts in ufology because neither you nor I have a craft chained up in our backyard where we can say, hey, come on, look, I'll show you. This is how it truly operates because we just don't. We have a lot of, you know, educated guesses and people that say they work here or there. And, you know, we, we take their advice and we store it and we save it until we can find out more data. But that's what it's all about, collecting the data, the evidence, meeting new people and their stories and collecting it and then sharing it with the world. So one day we could solve this for a common, you know, goal for, you know, the greater good, hopefully. And, and that's how I look at it. I'm very open minded with everything. And that's the way I think we need to be in this community. Yeah, and hey, talking about seeing a UFO and having missing time, a great example that combines your experience and your example all in one, Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan and the experience they had as they were before he was president, he was uh, going to uh, a party and they were driving. It was normally like a 35 to 40 minute ride or whatever, as they were driving through California on the you know coast roads and all that. They notice a object, a flying object kind of hovering there. They pulled the car over. You got off your motorcycle. There's a lot of overlapping things. It yeah. wasn't a triangle. They saw some sort of saucer craft, but they were standing there. They said they watched it maybe five minutes. And then they got in their cars after it went off and they went to the Hollywood party. They were hours, hours, hours late. Wow. That's and cool. This is a United States president. president. 
Yeah, and this this story is well documented. So, yeah. and that was back in the day, way back in the day, you know. Jimmy Carter too had a sighting. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Carter. So, I mean, th- these things are happening, Robert. There's there's no there's no doubting it. I mean, I I live on the beach now. I bought a, a house on the beach, and mm-hmm. I go out there and film all the time. I have people come out from my channel to join me anytime if they're free and they can use my night vision cameras, my FLIR, my my regular, whatever they want. I want them to come out and witness what's going on. Uh, and yes, I use apps to determine whether it's a plane. I even have uh, apps for drones on manned aerial vehicles and satellites and all of that. And I've actually filmed on more than one occasion. What you know, app do you use, products. real quick? Uh, I have I have tons of them. I have the radar app. Um, I, I have them all logged in, the, in okay. my laptop. I use uh, Heavens Above. Uh, I, I I think I have that one. Um, I'm, I I can't remember the name of this radar one that I have. That's really good. That's new. But I'll send it to you. Um, yeah. It gives you like the uh, is it flight track? Yeah, flight tracker. I use. And there's another one uh, for the satellites too. I'm 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 having a little trouble remembering the name, but I there's do have a lot. <laughs> say, there is a lot, and I and I go through new ones as they come in too, because they get better and better. Like I like the the flight tracker because it gives you the tail number and the route that the craft takes and oh, all of wow. that. Stuff. So you can map the area on flight tracker exactly where it is overhead, and also, um, uh, what is it? Elon Musk is uh, Starlink. They also have an app where you can track all the Starlink satellites and they'll let you know, you know, where they are in your location. It'll tell you when Starlink train is flying over or when one of their satellites are flying over. Even mm-hmm. NASA, you can track the International Space Station. That in itself is awe inspiring to look at over the ocean. It's beautiful. I've seen it yeah. a bunch of times. But it's good to know where these things are in the sky. So you know that you're looking at, you know, either a plane or a satellite or this or that, and you're not mistaking them for, a, you know, unidentified flying yeah, object. They look a lot alike. I see well, actual UFOs doing crazy things, power-ups, and then from a distance at night, they can look a lot like the ISS cruising by. They can look a lot like Starlink. It's and what they do and how they operate is like oh, that's not a satellite <laughs> yeah the um the old iridium flare satellites before they decommissioned them and put the new ones up you know they the solar arrays on those used to catch the sunlight in space and you would get that bright flash and then it would dim out and a lot of people would correlate that with uh, a craft powering up you know, and I'm sure back in the day when we didn't have all this technology, a lot of those satellites were mistaken for UFOs. But now that those got scrubbed, the new ones, you really don't see that, no. that bright flash on and off like you used to get from the solar rays reflecting. Um, but you, you still can see satellites with your naked eye. Even in New York with the light pollution, if you're in the right area with no street lights like I am on the beach, I can get down to like a Bortle 4 Portal three on the beach and it's nice and dark and you can really see what you're looking at beautifully. Um, but I like to log everything I get because I work with a UFO statistician. I'm sure you know Cheryl Costa and, and her and I go back and forth and she'll give me all the data for New York and I'll give her all my sightings for New York and we'll go back and forth and I'll fight with her all the time. No, this is the best. New York is the hot spot, not, not Ohio. It's New York this year. And I'm always going back and forth because you do have a lot of sightings and a lot of people don't report them all the time. That's mm-hmm. a problem. Um, people got to start logging them in a lot more. I would, I would like to see actual, uh, data for the, uh, how many people actually seen instead of leaving, you know, 400, 500, a thousand people out because they don't log them. Yeah. We'll and see better with time. I don't log mine. I just make YouTube videos. I have compilations of like 35. I have certain videos where it's multiple, uh, probably two months ago. I had uh, one that was coming in. It was so faint. I could barely see it. I started watching it early and and it was next to nothing. It was early in the morning. It starts to get directly above me and I start talking to it just out of curiosity. All right. If if this is actually something, it should do something irregular. And I was telling it power up and on command. Um, I've seen little like shiny power-ups, but this thing turned into, I have it on 4K video, 
4K, 30 frames per second. And this thing just turned into like a little sun. And then wow. it's early in the morning. You hear my girlfriend, stop. You're going to wake up the neighbors. I was I was geeking out. And <laughs> I, I, rec I record things all the I time. I do it all the time. <laughs> but this one was wow. And I'm, I'm watching it. And then it went real back and faint. I'm watching it. I'm gasping. Like, I was freezing cold. It was really cold. And then I just said, thank you so much. I love you. And as the you left my mouth, it does it again. Oh, that's now, the best when that happens. <laughs> and then it goes, uh, obviously, on the other side of my house, I lose it. I'm like, and I've literally recorded about 150 of these things. That was the most, like, accurate, real-time interaction where other ones, I feel like they're just doing their own thing. Like, this one, I'm like, is it possible they can, you know, communicate with us? It, that That really hit me, like, Oh I, man, I this is so. some technology. <laughs> I believe I believe you can communicate with them. You know, I I don't, I don't know if you're a fan of Dr. Greer or not, but you know, I do CE5 because I like the whole meditation aspect of it, getting myself in a nice, cool, calm, collected place before I go skywatch. And uh, I I think in a way uh, it, it's plausible that um, conscious communication with these craft could be a plausible thing. You know, they may be on the next phase of evolution where they're consciously connected to the craft. And it could be uh, plausible that you could connect with them in, in a way like that. Um, you Especially know, a lot what of you said about the craft you saw, you said you felt like it was alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it looked like the skin on the craft, the way it was undulating from the undertones of it in this weird, very light, very dim wave of that metallic re reflection almost made me feel like this thing's alive, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's weird. And, uh, and you have to materials, you know, yeah, our government yeah. has a lot of, I, about two years ago, article came out highly scientific and stuff saying we have exo materials that can literally change and bend light and change and alter our fabric of reality now imagine these crafts made out of these rare exo materials that aren't even from this planet we don't know what they're capable of we don't know if it's alive or if it's able to tap in with our consciousness so absolutely wow. I, I couldn't agree with you more couldn't agree with you. And and unfortunately, until you or I get our hands on one where we can really study it and the government doesn't take it away from us, we're not gonna know. But maybe one day we'll get enough information to say, Wow, I was right. You know, maybe yeah. they'll tell us one day, uh, you know, this is how they operate, this is what they're made of, this is where they come from. The basics I would like to hear at least. I would probably say our military would be flying them around, and that's the moment we get to learn more about them once they've already designed it themselves right yeah, I, I, I actually filmed one of these huge I, this thing was it was so massive and it was up in space it was so massive that the light was actually reflecting onto the ocean i actually have it here if you want to see it i don't know if this video has any sound if you want me to pull it up i'll pull it up if you don't <clears throat> wow Wow. Holy shit. Look at you. Holy shit. Look at this. Get out the cell phone. Hurry up, Aunt. Video that. Look at that. I got it on two devices. All right. It's on two devices. I got it.
Holy shit, that's low. Look how low that is. All right, you got it on your cell phone and you got it on... All right, so I got this on the iPhone and I got it on my cell phone. Look how low that is. I've also filmed, you know, the three points of light. I filmed them a bunch of times now, too, if you want to see those. I have an amazing daytime Tic Tac UFO flying through the clouds and it flips. It actually flips and then shoots off on an angle. I've never seen anything at that kind of G force just flip broad daylight. I've shared it over and over again. It never gets any views. It, it, they're too busy showing you black and white Tic Tacs on the news, not our I'm footage. Also, you know, I'm also noticing a lot of very small orb like craft in the daytime around helicopters. Have you noticed anything? I've like that seen recently? the one video about don't talk about the reptilians. The producer of that movie, he recorded it. It was uh, the LAPD. It was a black oh, helicopter. I, I, know that, I know that one you're talking about with the LAPD. I and know that the, one. The metal probes, which I had insiders and Air Force personnel tell me, and they were like really hesitant. And this is like off camera and everything. But they kept saying Israel, 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 surveillance, you know, drones. And I'm like, oh, I what, I yeah, I wonder what they are. I wonder if there's some kind of drone that the, the ET craft use to maybe map out our terrain or something where they're undetected. It just so happens that you see them whipped by helicopters. I, I film them quite often now, believe it or not. And they're not birds or balloons or anything like that. These objects, you could tell they're under intelligent control, whatever they are. I and mean, they're passing how they just move. Well, and if you're going to fly directly under a helicopter, the, the rotor wash, if it was a balloon, or I don't even think a bird would be dumb enough to fly under a helicopter with the rotor wash. They, they know by now that's dangerous for, for them. And a balloon would just whip out of the way, go the opposite way. These things just cut right through unimpeded. Yeah, like, you know, they, they, they don't move or nothing. Head. Oh, yeah. they don't run into it straight through. And I've been very fortunate to catch them. Uh, and a lot of people are now. So I'm wondering with these, if this is a new thing or it's just something we're starting to pay more attention to now. But I definitely have my eyes on it. Anything new in ufology, I like to have my eyes on, you know? Yeah. And hey, if they're reverse engineering other crafts, why wouldn't they reverse engineer these extraterrestrial drones as well? We've been like, you know, here in Craft for a long time. I've heard a lot of government people that work for Lockheed, and I've spoken to people that work for Skunk Works, and since McDonald we, Douglas. Yeah, I, I've spoken to many of these people, and you know, we had the alien reproduction vehicle already in the 1980s, and you know, we made that out of regular steel parts with a hatch and cameras and no windows on this thing, and they were able to fly that in the 80s, and uh, yeah. people have laid eyes on it, so it it, it exists. And God only knows where we are technologically today with these crafts. Yeah. I would love to get inside one. <laughs> what it we all? That, that, I would love to be a fly in the wall in like area S4 and area 51, you know, what I would give. Man. Someday, hopefully. Someday. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> but I do have a question for you, Anthony. Right. You know, after you had this experience, you're 13 years old, all right, Staten Island. And you come to this conclusion that you have this missing time. You've talked about, you know, wanting to find out more. But I know after my family's UFO crash case, my mom and they, they told me I was having awful nightmares all oh, the time. I still do to this day. So that's my question. After this incident, 
what were your dreams? Did you have night? What, um, what kind of dreams were you having? And maybe that will give us something, okay. you know? So I started having uh, dreams about all different kinds of beings. Um, I had one experience where I fell asleep on my couch and, um, you know, dream. This is a dream. And they walked through my wall where my TV was, woke me up off the couch, took me by the hand, walked through the wall. And when we walked through the wall, the wall, I was in this big, clear dome. And they were standing outside the dome, but very close to me. And they were showing me in my trying to show me in my mind why we can't bring weapons of mass destruction to other worlds and what it could cause and like what other factions of beings would do to us if we ever brought like weapons of mass destructions of any kind into space. And I, I had that dream and I'm, I'm, and I'm trying to ask them like, what does this have to do with me type thing? I'm trying to ask them, like, what does this have to do with me? And they, they, would just explain it to me. It's not only for you. We explain it to many of your kind is how it was explained to me. Then another time I had a dream that was so vivid. I remember going to sleep in my bed and I woke up on my couch sitting up in the sit up position, you know, and I woke up and my shoulder was killing me in pain because these beings that I had a dream of dragged me through this hallway in this craft my knees were bent. They would have one on each side. They're dragging me through this hallway. I remember the floor was oval. The archways were oval. Then they make a right. They get me into this other room with this big roundish oval bed. And this big pole thing keeps. Uh, so I want to say a pole, a pole that came down in multiple stages. Like, you know, like, like an antenna. Yeah, right. Like, like an antenna. radio antenna. Perfect, perfect analogy. Like an antenna. Okay. And then it went through my arm, this thing, and it drilled through the bone, and I smelt my skin burning and bone, and I'm screaming, and I can't move because I know this is going to sound nuts, but whatever metal was in my blood was magnetizing me to this table. I know that sounds crazy, but like whatever zinc, whatever zinc. in your blood that can hold you down, it held me. It was, I had enough in me that held me down to this table. That's how it wow. held me down. And they told me this. And that's wow. how I'm being held down. And and this dream is so vivid. These beings, they had like these heart-shaped heads that when I woke up from this, I commissioned somebody to, to draw this all out for me. So I'm going to send you those too because I was so freaked out by that dream. I called my buddy Chris. I'm like, Chris, you're an artist. You have to draw this experience for me. I have how to old were you when you this had was, this, this dream? This was just last year. Okay. All right. last year. I've had wow. you know, I've had dreams like this throughout my whole life, but I've always said their dreams and other people are like, no, they're taking you while you're sleeping. You're having the, you know, I, I hear so many different things, but I'm, I'm a hands-on guy. I need to have my hands on it to like study it and touch it and say, all right, this is yeah. real, real, you know, for me to go down that rabbit hole. But, you know, I still want to log everything that happens. So I have it and I could say, all right, this happened this time, this happened this time and see if there's any correlation with anything. But, um, yeah, I've had some some major UFO alien related dreams, but they always look like those little gray guys with those heart shaped heads, or they look like tall beings with um, almond shaped heads where the eyes are a little different. You know, they're not black; they look more human eyes, but the 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 irises are lighter colors, like purples and blues and pinks, and they're more human eye, but very big. And they're very friendly, and those ones with the heart-shaped heads are very like evil. I've never seen any like reptilian type or anything like that. Just just those two that I can recall, and I've dreamt throughout, you know, from when that incident happened up till now. I'm still having dreams like that. And uh, and in the first dream that you talked about, where they came through <laughs> the wall and the mm -hmm. TV, which I've heard so many people, everything you're saying, I've heard so many, the same thing, especially oh, really? with the message of laying down nuclear arms, even Admiral Byrd, and so many other uh, responders. To be, I, I know it sounds like, oh, some people are like, oh, this is so comic book, but it really, it, it, their message is like, you know, just... I think they want us to lay down our arms in our violent ways. I think they're trying to get us to submit that aspect of our lives. 
and then we'll open up to the next phase. I think that's what the messages mean. Yeah. I'm, I'm no scientist. I'm no scholar. But I think that's what they're trying to get to. I think that's why we don't actually physically get to sit down and have actual conversations here on Earth with them in our own time, and our own plane. Because I think we're just too violent. And mm -hmm. I think they want us to become more like them, for me yeah. to say. And I, I, I don't think until we become more like them that we're going to be able to really sit down and learn everything we want to learn from them. I know it sounds yeah. weird, but that's the only way I could put it together after all this time. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, look at human beings. We fight and hate each other for being white, brown, and black. Yeah. Like, what do you think we're going to do to something other that's purple? That totally looks different than all of us here on earth. And yeah. why does it have to be that way? Why can't, you know, we, we, you cut us open. We all bleed red on this planet. So, I mean, that mm -hmm. should be the defining factor between us all. We're all the same. The, the outside doesn't mean anything. You know, it's what's on the inside that defines a person. I think yeah. more people have to start looking like that uh, instead of looking the way that they're looking even today, which is sad, you know? Yeah. And you another know? great point is if we were to have some sort of space fleet weapons, etc., and we go out into the rest of the universe with our violent ways, it will be the end of our species because it there will. are billions they're way more than they're way more advanced than us. We are so far behind. Okay, just us. Ah, uh, it would backfire. I mean, <laughs> not to, not to throw names out there, Robert, but this week alone, I had the the opportunity to sit down with Travis Walton and Avi Loeb in the same week, and after having that experience and listening to both those gentlemen talk, that really opens your mind up to like, wow, Avi's talking. You're talking about a Harvard professor telling you that he believes that Oumuamu was an actual extraterrestrial craft that came next to Earth and, and passed through on a mothership. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, if that's if that's real, then oh my God, this is that's a game changer. You're talking about a Harvard astrophysicist coming forward a, a, to tell us that there's extraterrestrial life out there and he believes that it was just in our atmosphere not too long ago. Before him, we had John Mack, and then you got guys like Travis Walton, who had his UFO abduction. The guy's 75 years old, still telling the story just like it happened yesterday. I mean, yeah. I give these guys a lot of credit. They, you know, I'm friends with uh, Jennifer Stein. Sure. And she, she's an awesome friend of mine. She's done a lot on my case, but she's been working with uh, Travis as well. And just some of the things I, I've heard, you know, the off-camera stuff, um, it's truly an incredible um, experience. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's stood the test of time, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, wish, I wish they would catalog somehow everybody's UFO experience, you know, abduction experience that had one and, cate you know, categorize it and then peel through the layers and say, here's the similarities from Anthony, Travis, this one, this one, this one. Here's all the similarities we need to start looking at and figure out why the correlation is here. And here's everybody in 1993 that had a triangular sighting that was 13. Now let's find out the relationship between all these people at this age and why it happened to them. I think we would learn more if we did that instead of just yeah. telling the story and then forgetting about it. I think we got to start digging through the stories and peeling the data out. That's, that's really important. I think. I've actually, um, I've talked to uh, people in MUFON, like um, friends with George A. Filer, he's the East Coast director, all that. And, you know, this is one thing, you know, that MUFON really lacks. They just get the information and it just sits there. And I actually had a friend, I forget his name, but he started to make a map website where people can pin and put their experiences and others can go to a map and see each one i forget his name but um i my my team and i i i work with two other channels um i work with uh cosmic neighbors and my friend ron he's more like uh mapping and categorizing uh near earth objects and ufos like a moo moo that come close and he's the science guy and then my friend eric he does paranormal highway he's ufos ghost cryptids and all of that and the three of us and my my producer andy gambino we just started the ufo initiative is what we're calling it and wow. we're going to be like a mufon where you could come send us your whole experience 
And then you could, you know, if you have any trace element evidence or whatever, you could send it in. And then we'll send it out to three independent laboratories that are not college, you know, a college or anything where they have to answer to a government or they'll turn it over. We want three independent laboratories that'll do that testing, give us back the data, and then we can upload it onto the website where anybody could come for free and take a look at the findings and use it to, you know, however they want to use it. And people could say, all right, here, look on Staten Island. It was a UFO sighting on Thursday. This is the shape of the object. Here's the video. And then they can study it and do their own work with it too. And like I said, if there's any data that comes in with it, we'll, we'll upload it there. And it'd be for the taking for anybody to use for scientific purposes for free. So that's, it's a lot awesome. of work. But we're starting it now. And I, like I was just telling you about categorizing abduction uh, abductions like you know Anthony Tom Frank Bill Harry they all had the same experience in ninety three let's find the correlation on why they seen this that and the third and see if we could find anything that makes these you know handful of guys similar to each other and why they would have this experience and then UFO abducting people that research that could come find the correlation take our uh, our research and use it you know how take it to the next step and do whatever they get it you know do with it so we can further the process and education on this on this topic because it's very important this is one of the most important topics in the world i, I believe is ufology because yeah. i think that would make it a lot easier yeah. for experiencers sure. to find others because a big part of what i do here with Thank we you. are the disclosure exactly. new era of contact all the guests almost every episode i always find myself finding my old thumbnails because i have to bring it up because someone two years later is saying the same thing i'm like what's going on <laughs> um it's wild and um one and that's amazing i i look forward to seeing it one question i have going back sure. to your extremely real lucid dream it feels silly saying dream but it is what it is but yeah. you said uh something going on you know with, with your shoulder um they were telling you a lot of different things and messages did they ever explain what the heck they were doing to you six months well i had my shoulder uh when i got crushed in the building i had it reconstructed and my bicep tendon taken out and i have a prosthetic in there in the shoulder that i had this pole go through this antenna pin thing go through and when I woke up the next morning, I was in excruciating pain and I was like, what the hell would they want to do with my shoulder? But, uh, you know, I, I would like to tell you, I can move my shoulder now. There's no more pain, but none of that happened. So I don't know what they did. Maybe they implanted something in my bone. Maybe they were testing to see if I'm healing on some. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the whole purpose of that thing was. And uh, they were the heart headed little grays. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, it's just interesting. Uh, they were not. I've, I've heard stories of people being abducted and things, and they had medical issues that they weren't aware of, you know, and these things coming in there to actually try to help. But it, at the same I, time, you don't, don't get a good feeling with these things. So not, that might not be the case. Not, but not. Travis Walton, his experience. It yeah. was very traumatizing at first, but those beings saved his life. Right. He I asked, he asked him, I said, you know, Travis, if you were you on two, do you think you were on two separate, you know, craft? He goes, I actually think that the first guys took me, I was blown up. And then, you know, another crew came in to take me and put me back together because the other guys couldn't figure out how to do it. He thinks he was on two different craft. The, wow. the, the people that attacked him and then the people that saved him. And yeah. uh, that's fascinating, fascinating stuff. <laughs> but uh, so I wonder, it could really be either way. Were they uh, doing something the opposite from what the it, other beings? Who knows? Travis, <laughs> Speculate. I'll tell you, Travis was scared out of his mind when he was on the crafts, too, right? Yeah. And I was scared out of my mind when I was there because you're looking at something they, that may be their physical appearance is plain faced and, and brute faced, but they may not use their lips to speak. They may be so far advanced that everything with them is telepathy. Mm -hmm. So you're assuming because they got that monotone face that they're evil and yeah. the way they're moving you and getting you to and from, you may think it's 
brute and they're trying to hurt you, but you're so scared when it's happening that maybe the only way to get you to go from point A to B is to drag you there to get this done. And who knows? Maybe, you know, th- this only happened, I don't know, like seven, eight, maybe not even. I want to say a year. It's getting close to a year now since I had that dream. Maybe it's slowly healing up because I'm totally disabled. Maybe by next year I'll be able to raise my arm over my head because I can't do that. So who knows? Yeah. You know, who knows what they did or they tried to do. And maybe they're trying to get things to heal. Uh, and I'm looking at it as, you know, these guys took me and did things with me and terrified me. But they could be there to, to help. They may yeah. have been around my entire life. And I just really don't know. I only know what I know, but, you know, not everything in between might be hidden from you for some reason. And at a future date, it may be, you know, relate to me. This is why this, that, and the third is happening. Who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, we have to wait. And and Anthony, um, it kind of sounds like the black triangle craft that you saw was, you know, an eye opener for you. But prior to that, did you ever have any strange paranormal um strange dreams maybe not necessarily extraterrestrials or ufos but was there anything odd going on before 13 years old that you can Uh, recall no uh the year before i was like 11 or 12 i seen a ghost in my grandma's house oh wow (laughs) you know i i seen an apparition in there uh other than that no uh, when I was 19, though, I had a motorcycle accident that was really bad. And I actually died on the scene and I had to get defibrillated twice on the way to the hospital. And while I was out, I kind of went into like an in-between place. Mm-hmm. And um, when, I, when I fell out and I was there, I was walking through the woods and I was looking for my motorcycle that had gotten thrown. I had a 900 Ninja. I got hit head on by a, a, a rider moving truck going the wrong way down a one way the truck was. And I clipped, you know, I clipped his front end and I went flying, bit my tongue off, broke bones. Everything was bad, bad, bad. But um, I thought the me and the bike got thrown in the woods. So I was like looking in the woods for the motorcycle. And, and then I seen a, a person walking towards me and he was like very blurry and distorted. And as he got closer, I, I seen the guy in a mask. Can you help me find my motorcycle? And the only thing this man would ask me is if I wanted to go home. And, I, you know, I kept telling him, I got to find the bike. You know, I just bought it. Can you please help me look? And he asked again, do you want to go home? And then the third time I got really pissed off. I said, yeah, I want to go home, but I got to find the motorcycle. Help me find the motorcycle. And he put his hand into my chest. It went right through my chest. And I went, <gasps> and I woke up in the ambulance. And it wasn't until uh, seven or eight months later, again, when I can, I had all my speech back, uh, and I was telling my mom the story, and she started digging through pictures. She's like, you know, I think maybe you've seen one of your relatives. I think, you know, when your heart stopped, maybe you went into an in-between place, and I think you've seen one of your relatives. Was a guardian angel or something? I, I, I don't know. She, what did the person look like? And I said, well, he had black curly hair and a mustache. A good looking guy, and um, uh, he didn't tell me a name or anything, so she starts going through all these pictures. My mom, and no, I don't know, Ma, 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 you're crazy, no. (laughs) And then finally, she pulled out a Polaroid of a guy holding me when I'm an infant. And I said, Who's that? She goes, That's your godfather, Michael. He he died in a tow truck accident on Staten Island when you were, you know, a baby. And I said, Ma, you, you whoa. That's that's the guy that put his hand through my chest and I woke up again in the ambulance and I keep his picture next to me. Oh, there he is. Wow. I saw the Michael Digioso and him holding me when I was a baby. And you can see the, the Polaroids all ripped up because it was stuck to another Polaroid. Oh. And I, I keep the picture with me and I keep his tow truck keys next to me for good luck because I think he's my guardian angel. That's the man that I seen. I guess when I crossed over and and he, I don't know, a lot, I want to wow. say allowed me to make the choice to come back. And uh, yeah, I was, it, it's a wild story. It's, it's, there's a lot more to it than that, but I'm just telling you, you know, the fast version, but it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's really was amazing ama- experience. Yeah. NDEs, near death experiences. And I, 
my favorite thing about NDEs, you know, they they're they're all different, but they're all the same. They, they're, there's this overall common thing that's happening. It's just the characters, the places change but the, it's this overwhelming general idea it, it's so real robert i mean when I, I for me i i could say that when you die you have nothing to worry about you, you, yeah. go, you there can, is no death no no your energy you, it, you there really is no there's nothing to be afraid of i yeah. I, can, I can die right now happy i have no fear of going at any time I lost that after this happened. I totally yeah. lost that. And another strange thing after that happened real quick is since I had that near death experience at 19, I've walked in on my aunt eating steak choking and I walked into the house just to say hello. And I walked in at the right time to give her the Heimlich like a couple of times. Now I walked in to a situation where if I didn't walk in, the person would be dead. When I was a rookie cop, I took all the guys back to my parents' house for a Sunday dinner. My mom's like, come back with the guys. You're on Staten Island. She's like, come, come eat. I walk in the house. And as I walk in the door, my mom falls backwards down the stairs having a seizure and coded. If I didn't walk in in uniform with my radio to call officer down, I called, you know, officer's mom down. They came from everywhere to get to her. They saved her. Or if I didn't walk into my aunt, she would have choked to death. And another time I walked in, a kid was in a pool. He snuck into my aunt's backyard. He was like seven years old, jumped in the pool, didn't know how to swim, drowned. And I just happened to be visiting my aunt, cut through the backyard, and the kid's floating in the pool, and I pull him out. Wow. And three different times that happened to me. and you know, So it's like after these NDEs happen to you, they give you a purpose, like you, you're you meant to do something. They give you a little gift, I feel like I left with, you know, right? Yeah, place. and it's like you're a magnet. It's I'm like you don't know trouble. why you're going to these situations. <laughs> yeah, I'm a magnet. Thankfully, you're situation. there. Yeah, right. Wow. And you know what? To back you up, my stepfather, yes. I was telling you before, you know, the interview, young, he had a motorcycle accident, died, same thing. That's when he had, and he's aware of, all of this, especially being with my mom and her abductions, all that, but he's fully with it. And the amount of knowledge in his mind, it all came he knows. from his motorcycle crash. And it was, that was the moment that really, and he has found himself in some crazy predicaments, you so know? His dad and, uh, yeah. And uh, he said it was one of the most profound experiences oh, and it just opens up a whole can of worm. I've had a lot of NDE experiencers on my channel and uh, you, you must feel so blessed oh. to have been in those situations at that time and actually understand yeah. the like galactic universal idea of it of why it's happening you here's, know right see here's the thing Robert. like when i walked in and the first time my aunt was choking and i gave her the heimlich and and she was fine and she, oh thank you baby you saved me blah, blah, blah. but i knew for some reason i just showed up there like i knew i had to be there i know mm -hmm. how crazy that sounds but like i knew i had to go visit my aunt at that time and i didn't know why but you know i i said to my i gotta go see my aunt Lori. and premonitions i, yeah, I believe like premonition, yeah. right and that's yeah. happened more than once now. And uh, thank God, you know, thank yeah. God. Hey, and just like how you, your godfather saved you. Right. He, he did that on the other side. You, you're the actually side. doing it on this side. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. But it, it, if you if you study NDE and you get go down that rabbit hole, you'll see that this is a common occurrence for people after they have an experience like that. It's like, uh, I, I know you get touched with a piece of knowledge that you can't put your finger on, but y y you know, it's there. And, and, and I, I'm blessed that I was blessed with that. But just the fact of saving one life is a miracle, but to do it multiple times is <laughs> beyond a miracle. You know, it's forget it. It's life changing. And I look at it as, you know, it, not that I believe in death, we'll call it transitioning in life. We'll transition. call them those two things. I believe there's a veil in the middle. And it's almost like you learn how to count to 10. You know how hard you have to work on to forget and not know how to count to 10? Mm -hmm. You know, what, it's almost like once you get to that point of the veil and you cross that line, even though you come back because you were there, 
The yeah. veil's already been torn. Lifted. There is right. no going yeah. back. No veil. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's that's a good analogy. Right. There is. It's like there's no more veil. There's no going back. Right. Exactly. Right. That's. I, I can't imagine. Fortunately, <laughs> I I haven't came that close yet. But um, you also said that you know you saw a ghost, right, at your grandmother's. Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah. The the property that uh my grandparents' house was built on. Uh, they actually moved St. Mary's Cemetery from that property and relocated it oh. a half away. So, like all the headstones, the, the cat, you know, caskets there, they were all relocated. And they didn't tell us that we were we were kids, but it was later on in life that I found out that's probably why I seen this ghost. And uh, yeah, I had uh, slept by the fireplace. I slept at my grandmother's house. They had like an entertainment room with a couch and everything in the fireplace. And it was like around Christmas time and I fell asleep watching TV downstairs because when I was a kid, it wasn't like it is today. You have a TV in every room, you know, it was a TV downstairs and that was it. So I was in the fireplace room watching TV and I probably fell asleep watching the TV by the fireplace. And I woke up because it was freezing cold in the house because the fire had gone out. But the embers was like still, the logs were like still glowing red. So there was like a little light. And I see this woman walk by very fast past you know the front of the fireplace and you know when you do like one of those like what did i just see like you're trying to wake yourself up like what the hell yeah was that? and when i did that and opened my eyes it was like right here um oh. and right through it and then it was just gone and i i stood up i i literally felt like all my hair stood up everywhere on my body like if i had your beard it would have been like out to here standing up <laughs> but <yeah. laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but, but, you know, picture being a little kid, seeing that, like, I was frozen. I didn't want to, I, I couldn't move. I couldn't run up the stairs. I couldn't yell. And I, I seen it, you know, it didn't do anything to me or anything. It just frightened me, you know, seeing a, a ghost like that. But I, I seen right through her. It was a woman. I seen right through her. And how old were you when that happened? Well, I had to be 11 or 12. Okay. Yeah. A little bit before, you know, the... Yeah triangular yeah. sighting and, wow and I, I had told my you know my grandmother and my aunt everybody what happened and they were like oh that's that's just the lady she ain't gonna hurt you she lives in the house and i'm like we have a ghost that lives in the house and i never told us and then my aunt was like that's exactly why you don't tell the kids there's a ghost in the house <laughs> yeah and i didn't want to go back there anymore for a long time you know that, and then, that's why yeah, and my you know my aunt would be like, it's not gonna did it hurt you and i was like no it didn't hurt me it scared the shit out of me but it didn't hurt me and she was like well that's uh you know that's that's all they can do, you know. So, so I mean that that makes sense because with your channel, Unidentified S4, you do cover the paranormal. We do, and you have had NDEs, ghost encounters, oh, experience. We've, we've gone so, out on ghost hunts. We filmed apparitions in Fleer. We filmed okay. a handprint on a wall appear in Fleer. I mean, we've we've. We've done a lot of things in, in our time. So you you do investigating. Oh, yeah. I, I've I'm done not, quite a bit field. myself. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been field. to um, a lot of really interesting places like uh, Lake Shawnee, abandoned, oh, yeah, uh, sure. haunted. I've been there twice, the whole place to myself, just camping there, having a good time. That is probably one of the most haunted places I've ever been to. Full, like, insane. I've never... And I've been to like Eastern State Penitentiary, oh, other places, really um, so many others. But I've seen and had quite a few uh, very I, compelling I paranormal experiences. I watched a, a short video the other day when that orb of light was flying. Oh, yeah. you. That was amazing. Yeah, um, it happens a lot when I'm on TikTok or Facebook Live. It's just I always forget to go through the live to get a screen recording because yeah. not like i save them it's just me it, promoting it, my videos it happened Weird. To, it happened to me uh i think like four months ago we, i adopted my niece so she lives with us and she was playing jumping off and down the couch and she's like come get me come get me and i'm filming her you know we're kidding around filming her and i literally i'm filming this orb like circling around her like this and then going just, around her, like yeah, just around her, coming went around, into frame. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. And then sh just zips off. But my wife's mom, we bought my my father in law's house. I purchased when he moved to Florida, and her mom passed away in this house. Oh. So that would be my niece's grandmother that passed away. So I think that she visits my niece. 
Mm-hmm. And I only th- I, I, I say this because uh, there's been a couple things that have happened in this house. Like you hear someone walking up the steps. And then one night I hear my niece talking, but she's talking in her sleep. And mm-hmm. then she, she had a picture on her wall on a nail, like one of them deep frame pictures. And the picture got thrown off the wall. And it's a picture of hands with a heart like this that say, I love you. And that picture got thrown off the wall, you know, onto her floor. Now, I don't, not in, a, not in an evil way. I think in a way saying like, I love you. Like it knocked the picture off the wall to say it, like, I love you. Like trying to give you a message. That's how I took it. I don't take it as anything evil or malevolent. I think it's, I think it's her mom in this house, but I won't tell my wife that. But that's what I think because she passed away here. So who's to say? As soon as my wife goes on vacation, I'm having the boys come here with the equipment. We're going to do an investigation because I really yeah. want to see if we get anything. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. I know one of the craziest uh, ghost stories. It wasn't. I, I've seen apparitions. I lived in Gettysburg. I oh, so I, 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 I used I used to do my homework at Devil's Gettysburg Day. And little, amazing place to be, man. You just see them shimmering, walking right by. They don't recognize you they don't look at you they yeah, fade in and out it looks like a reflection over and over again uh, residual type stuff Res- over there right 100 percent residual never had intelligent anything of yeah. my experiences out there but when i was younger nine years old um one day i woke up it was a school day it was cold snow outside uh, winter time and i wasn't feeling good that day and i stayed home my mom dad my brother sister they all went to work all that and i stayed home i was watching cartoons and i was you know nine years old so i got a couple frank's hot dogs pump paper plate popped in the microwave and i was just eating two hot dogs with ketchup no bun just you know <laughs> nine years old sitting there watching my cartoons i get done the eating them in my boxer shorts get done eating them i walk out of the living room i and as soon as you walk out the living room dining room there was a kitchen that we just had all refurnished all new cabinets all the way around on both sides okay and the trash can was right there on the corner and the, we had a telephone up on the wall right there and i turned the corner just to throw my hot dogs away and every single cabinet door is open no i mean ugh, i i'm getting goosebumps right now it was how straight they were like I, I couldn't even do that on purpose. You know what I mean? Did you hear them open? Or you no. Just open it? Wow, that's freaky. No, I was. I turned the corner, throw my paper plate away, and then I noticed I wasn't even going to look. Wow. I, I freaked out, and it kind of felt like they were all trying to grab me because they were just pinpoint perfect. I've seen videos online where each cabinet's a little off and they open up, but I've never seen one where they were like it's so strange. straight. And I grabbed the phone in my boxer shorts. I went outside my back door. I ran. I called my mom that was at work. She worked at a pest control company at the time. I said, Mom, you're not going to believe this. I didn't even tell her what happened. I just told her, come home. She did. I am I see her go through the front door. I'm looking through the glass. And I'm just like, I wouldn't go in there until like she was in there. She walks in. I'm still outside in my underwear, shivering. <laughs> I know how you no, feel. No <laughs> shoes on in the snow. And she she just goes, okay. And she shuts them all. And she was telling my grandmother. And my great-grandmother passed away exactly one year before we didn't make that connection. It was the one-year anniversary of my great-grandmother. Yeah. And we we're like, well, why would she do that? Well, when she used to get in a mood... She used to go around opening and slamming all the cupboards you and all the my, things. I'm you got like, my hair standing up. Dude. I know. I'm getting, I was like, <laughs> oh, man. So um, young ages, these experience, like what yes. you had at 11, and it opens your eyes. Well, see, I'm trying to figure out if my niece now is just talking in her sleep. Or? Or she's having a full-blown conversation with somebody. Because it literally sounds like she's having a full-blown conversation with somebody. Like, I'll be sitting downstairs because I'm retired. So I'll stay up all night and I'm working on the computer, editing, whatever. And I got TV off and I'm just in my work on the couch. And I'll hear her, like, laughing, talking. Having, and I'll walk upstairs and she's out cold. Like, oh, wow. Hell? So, like, really, like, one night I got to sit up, you know. A baby baby monitor. Yeah, maybe a bit. I I have ring cameras inside the house, so maybe I'll just set one up in her room. It has audio and everything, and it has night vision. 
I, I got to catch it because it happens yeah. very frequently. And maybe if I'm fortunate, she's talking to someone and, and I'll get that on film or something. Even yeah. two different audios would be great. Like her and then whoever she's talking Because by the time you go up there and investigate what she's saying, because in a distance, you just Stop. hear chatter. You don't know what she's saying. You'll then you get like, there and it's done. You'll hear like, <laughs> like yeah, oh, you're funny. Oh, you want to play now? Like, no, not now. Like something like that. Oh, wow. And, then, and I'll sometimes I'll yell like, Destiny, are you up? And I'll wait another, and then I'll, I'll and then I'll hear something again. And that's like this. I'm gonna kill this kid. She's up at two o'clock in the morning, and you walk up the stairs, and she's out cold, silent. Wow. And it happens so many times. I'm like, all right. So either she's talking in her sleep and having a dream, and she's having a full blown conversation like that, or something else is going on, and that's why the picture came off the wall. That's why the orb and all the sound on the stairs and all these things are correlating to something and i i gotta find how, she how how old is she she just turned eight. Oh wow so wow, she's young. wow wow so wow. experience like that happen when you're very young so yeah. it's my this might be like prime time to catch what's going on i'm gonna try if there's yeah. nothing there, there's nothing there but if there is and i can document it that'll be that'll be gold well, think about this with our experiences as kids and what right. we went through we exactly. wish someone would have documented it for us exactly exactly we would be showing that. it right now yes, sir <laughs> exactly exactly i'm so 42 years favor. old and i'm still going back to my old neighborhood hey do you remember seeing a triangle ufo like in 93 do you do you know like anthony are you crazy you get crazy in your old age but i still go ask when i run into people come on you you had to have seen it it was massive no yeah. I still ask to this day because I want. Um, I pray. So one day I ask the right name, and he's like, "Yeah, I got it on video." You know, I, I, I'm I'm waiting for that to happen. You know, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you never I, know. I I get it, man. I it's not just the town, the entire county. When I found the articles and stuff, I went to like Facebook groups for our county, and I put it up, and people just started connecting all the dots. I started getting so many reports. Oh, oh, very important. Yeah, and uh, to to bring it back to the craft. Oh, I I should have asked this. In this vicinity, with my UFO crash, the black triangle, you know, I saw, it was very close to a nuclear plant. In this part of Staten Island, was there any sort of nuclear facilities, military bases, missile silos, etc.? Uh, Fort Wadsworth is five minutes away from my location on Staten Island. Fort Wadsworth okay. is where they used to house the bombs that they would load on the jets. Uh, okay. Okay. And then the, if you look the opposite way to the left of me, which would be the west side of Staten Island, you cut directly across the ocean for a mile, is Fort Earl uh, Naval Weapons Station, where they keep all the bombs and stuff like that. It's a, a reloading weapons uh, depot for the Navy. For wow. the planes and the battleships, they load Tomahawk missiles and all, God only knows what else. And uh, that's directly to the opposite side of where the okay. craft came in. So behind the craft and to the right of the craft was behind it was uh, Fort Wadsworth, and off to the right was Fort Earl Naval's weapon station. So, yes. And my next question would be um, and that's exactly where I was kind of going. <laughs> Excuse me. When this craft was coming into your point of view, was it coming from the direction of the ocean? Yes, it was coming from the direction of the ocean. Yes. And then when it That's left, it I went thought, straight up. <laughs> straight up. That's why I thought. That's why I thought that it was coming from Coney Island, from the air show where they used to fly in, come over mm -hmm. Staten Island, and turn around. Yeah. Because right there, how that peninsula is, for people that may not be familiar with Staten Island, it is, it's a peninsula of sorts, you know? degrees of ocean and then 17 miles of land. It is an island. Yeah, it's an island. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any direction it would have came in would have been the ocean, but the, the area that it came in from was the direct path from Coney Island where they would do the air show. That's why initially... I thought, <laughs> lucky me, right place, right time. I'm going to get to see a stealth bomber up close and personal doing its test run from the air show. But it was not a stealth bomber. And it had nothing to do with the air show. <laughs> and you said one other point. I'm just making all these little connections, trying to find common threads. 
My UFO crash, it was marshlands, the lower Alawase Creek, a bridge, a lot of foxtails, a lot of mud. You know how same creek lands. Same thing, where right. I, same, same thing with the wetlands where I am. Well, that's what I was getting at. And where you were on this motorcycle, was that like your surroundings in that yeah, area? Yeah, marshland. Sometimes I think these things like to come over these wet it may have something to do with how they operate or maybe if they're going to try to do an upgrade or repair something, maybe they go there. So if they go down, it's not hard ground and it's not an ocean. It's a not even land. that. Maybe it's just a spot where they can hide and blend in to do whatever they got to do to the craft. Maybe it was coming in low to come land into the field. And they said, wait a minute, there's one of those stupid humans over there. Now what are we going to do? Oh, go back up. You know, they could have been contemplating with each other for a few. maybe the whole reason why that second object came off of it was something was wrong with it. And they had yeah. to drop it down to fix something. Who knows? And then they were like, wait, we can't. There's kids dirt bike And look, there's one standing there. All right, pack it in. We're going up. And we're they, going out. We're going up. We're out. You know, who knows? That, that That's a great point it's very very possible that would make sense they they clearly had to see well, you there it was the you know purpose of disconnecting the second object from the first yeah but what not to show me yeah something could have been wrong with the object the craft number two maybe maybe out of know. alignment that's why they had to do the counter that's rotation the magnetism at each other. maybe it was out of alignment maybe something was wrong and it's magnetism, like you said, that connect, like you get, you take two magnets and that, that, that little pop. That's right. Holy smokes, dude. You know, Maybe like, that's... You know, I never even thought of that. That could very well be why they detach from each other because something oh, was wrong. They were out of alignment or something. I mean, mine exploded and actually went down. So obviously these things can have issues. Although with my, my case, there was a white beam of light or a ball of light that came down and hit the craft and made it explode. Don't know what that was, but with yours, it really does sound like some sort of was mechanically issue. wrong with it. That's why it just gonna and then when it relocked itself into position, you know, it was almost seamless when it did yeah. that second time. Like totally see like it looked like one craft. You know what I mean? Yeah. You didn't see any cracks, nothing. Nothing, nothing, back nothing. To one crack. So maybe it got itself situated in the way it had to be in the first place and then it shot straight up maybe it it's had almost like that, a that little like a ufo tire change maybe mid-air maybe you know, like... maybe oh, wow. that's that's really cool robert that you brought that up man i never thought about that I, 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 we all I meet know. we all meet each other for a reason that could have been the reason why you and i connected today because you had information to pass along. That's 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 yeah. awesome that you even said that. Yeah, Very and cool. the whole reason I wanted you on is because 1993, triangle. 1991, triangle. Anytime I hear the word triangle, people get my full attention. And even you're, if right, it, and you're you right know. over the bridge. You're right in Jersey. And, yeah. and we're right next to each other. We're neighbors, you know? Yeah, that's I'm down there. I'm in South Jersey. I'm close to Delaware. Delaware Bay, right. Dover's oh, right it, across. Jersey, we're not... I, I only say it because tr I see the triangle, you see the triangle. Oh, yeah. Maybe this is an area where they, I don't know, they maybe have a base under the ocean for all we know. Maybe when that object goes straight up into the Earth's atmosphere and it goes straight up, maybe its planet is right over us, but maybe a million miles away. Who knows? I mean, yeah. So also, many... I've, have you ever looked into ley lines and energetic I lines? I, I, I have dousing rods. Y your area there it, there's a triangle a point and it goes from your area straight down cuts through where i'm here in jersey it goes right on down to washington yeah. dc see it's funny because <laughs> i i believe that these craft when they come to earth they follow the earth's magnetic ley lines like a like a a highway Fuel. almost yeah you know, or maybe they they're, charge they're railroad tracks, you know, right? Or maybe they charge on our ley lines, you know, maybe they fly low over our ley lines and that's how they recharge, or, or something to that effect. Who knows? Maybe there's some kind of energy that our earth puts out through our uh, ley lines that these crafts energize with, 
or yes. they collect data from the earth through the ley line, like how much pollution is on the planet, you know, how hurt is Mother Earth, how much more time does the planet, have? maybe they get all that information through the ley line. Who knows? Who are we to say that it, it is or it isn't? It's a it's a possibility, you know. Yeah, and this craft was a triangle, and uh, back in like 2012, um, I started really getting into uh, you know. Uh, the quantum physics of triangles and the matrixing properties that these crafts can hold. And when you use these certain matrixing codes that they actually use to develop the stealth bomber, that's why you don't see it until it's over you mm -hmm. or hear it. certain uh, properties of the quantum physics of a triangle, you actually get a lot of infinite numbers. If you apply the quantum physics of the triangle into the stock market, you could find ways to get unlimited and inf infinite pennies. Uh, <laughs> I like to get hope... money out of this stock market. Yeah, you know trick. <laughs> may, may, maybe I should talk about that and start to get in the stock market and use this mathematics. But um, it's really interesting because you do get these infinite numbers and it does create a matrix. Although the space is there, there is actually more space and maybe, just maybe, these triangular crests and the ley lines, energies, and the charge ups, maybe that plays some sort of factor within the shape of the craft and the physics. And as you were discussing, the exomaterials that are alive that they're using on top of that. When you yep. stack all of this up, whoa, it, it's something. <laughs> it is. And it's, it's mind boggling to try to put it all together ourselves as laymen, you need like somebody with the scientific knowledge to do that. But if we can explain it to a scientist in, in such a manner, like you just laid it out, that could give somebody in the scientific world, the aha moment. That's what I'm missing when I'm doing my research. That's why we all have to work together. That's where yeah. community comes in. And piece of the puzzle. We right. all got a piece. Right. We, we all have got it. The puzzle. Exactly. Exactly. Big picture. That's the That's only right. way we get to figure it out. That's right. And uh, yeah. So uh, one other thing, uh, and thank you so much. I, I'm just I'm geeking out. I could talk yeah. about this black triangle all day long. Yeah. But um, you know, you have an amazing channel, and I I would like you to just talk a little bit about what you're doing on there, the sure. unidentified S4, and all that good stuff, and tell people how you know they can reach you. Sure. I will have your information in the description for everyone watching now so make sure to check that out but yeah tell us what you got going so, on any um, big plans uh unidentified s4 like i said i'm a boots on the ground investigator i'm i'm out in the field i work primarily on the shoreline of staten island i i'm very into the ufos over the ocean and over water um i work with some of the greatest researchers in our field um, my partner, Ron uh, Mason from Cosmic Neighbors and Eric Wood from Paranormal Highway, we merged our channels together where we bring uh, UFOs, ghosts, and cryptids in as one plus the scientific aspect of everything. We're a safe space for anyone to come tell their story without being judged. Uh, we welcome everyone and anyone that's interested in ufology. Like I said, it's a safe place for you to come, hang out, tell your thoughts, and, and just be yourself. And if you have any footage, any documentation, any evidence, bring it on in and we'll be happy to take a look at it, put it up, have you on the show, talk to you and spread the knowledge, spread the story, spread the wealth of information that's out there. And that's what we're all about. And we're on uh, Wednesday at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. And tonight, Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wow. And I just saw that it's not... Uh ufos but i believe they're kind of like aliens that big foot uh footage cool. that someone sent sent to you yeah that that was or, uh Nova Ontario. yeah if it if real that's a really cool sighting i mean i that's pretty wild that it the guy seemed that authentic he, he was just recording i i just got back from a boat trip where i was recording a lake and scenery on the side doing the same thing he was it wasn't like he hit record there was a big foot right no he was shown he, he was speaking to some woman by the name of cheryl and he's like yeah. this is the lake that you want to come visit this is what it looks like and he was going straight out and then he just went and turned around the boat yeah it happened to be like an island an inlet over there and he's just turning the boat showing her and he he was so far away from that piece of land 
And the thing woke up, he's like, what is that? And I zoomed in so we could see it. I think if it would have been hoaxed, he would have been really close to this. So you could really get a good look yeah. at it. You know what I mean? The distance and the way he was talking to the position of the boat makes me think he caught something legitimately that he wasn't expecting to see. And um, yeah. um, on Ontario, Canada, the northern part is all the woods. So yeah. that's you can't even see in there 10 feet. You know, it's like looking into a box of Q-tips, the trees, they're so stacked up on each other like that, you know? So, but go check it out. It's a great piece of footage. Yeah. I, it ha has my approval, you know, yeah, as, awesome. as if that's worth that. He's like, awesome. uh, amazing stuff on there. And, and you, feel you free to, uh, sorry to cut you off. Feel free to take anything from my channel, share it, show it. Uh, everybody's welcome to anything. That's what we're all about sharing the knowledge so you know feel free to take anything you want to use the show oh that's a beautiful thing and that's what it's all about i know sure. some people get upset when people use their stuff i'm like why are you getting what's upset isn't happening? that the point of it right what's the sense of hoarding something like get it out there to to get the answers that's what it's all about man you know someone can share it and reach a group of people that you and i can't right. reach that's yeah. more people that know so exactly everyone my share point, it right? exactly yeah. agreed absolutely so well anthony amazing amazing uh thank experience so experiences thank you not just one so many uh different things and everyone please go in the description and make sure you check out the link i'll have all of the different websites the youtube channels i want to have it all in there so all of you can check him out thank our good so friend much. she would be angry at me if i didn't bring her up Angel Wings, our oh, good friend. Angel Wings, what a doll. Yeah, so Sweet Angel God. Wings, thanks for, uh, she was the one that told me about you. Right. She was a previous guest, and she so said, awesome. you got to check this guy out. So a cool. shout-out to you. I can't forget about, she would have been so angry <laughs> if I didn't give her a shout-out. She is the best. I actually, I just talked to her the other day. I just sent her a silver uh, ring that has uh, Angel Wings on it. So I'm waiting for her to get it. She's oh, going to awesome. love that. I can't wait till she gets it. She's such She's a cool wonderful. person, man. Yeah. yeah. And, so cool. uh, I'm, we're thankful. We got a great community behind yeah. both of us. Yeah. Great fans, great friends, etc. Yeah. And um, yeah, so everyone hit that like button. Give it a big old thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the page. Then you go over to Anthony and you subscribe to Please. Unidentified S4 and give yeah. his videos some likes and share them around. We Thank really you. appreciate it. And we will see you next time on a new era of contact. We're out. Have a good night, everyone. All right, man. I don't know what we got in the sky here. Wow. What is that over Staten Island? Oh, no. Low battery. I'm going to just keep plugging away. What is going on there? The moon is here. I don't know what that is, man. Oh my God, what is this? We are live over Staten Island, New York, friends. Oh my God, this is not seen with the naked eye. I don't know what that is. As you can see, that is the moon. Uh, this is no effect. There it is up in the sky. What? What the hell is this? Oh, I'm zoomed in all the way. This is illuminating the entire sky, ladies and gentlemen. It is illuminating the entire sky. Let me get a laser on this for you for... Right here, I do not know what that is. What? I do not know what this anomaly is. Unbelievable, it is just there. Um, I did my CE5 protocols. Oh my goodness gracious, I'm gonna just pull back here real quick. Uh, as you can see, I'm over the ocean line, and that is about uh, a couple hundred feet in the atmosphere. I don't know what we got going on there.
Wow. I'm gonna, my battery is gonna die. It's dying. I, I lost the object. everyone check out the order of light merchandise store we got a lot of different t-shirts there the humans aren't real lower always creek incident we got tank tops the merkaba we got stickers glasses a lot of different glasses so get thirsty we got bags i live in new jersey we don't have bags anymore so it's really nice we got flip-flops hoodies and all the ladies out there we got a bunch of awesome merchandise for you please join the youtube membership for my channel you will get exclusive badges really awesome some emojis, member only live streams, posts, and chats, and connections with me for only $5.99 a month. See you there.